I'm Sharon from Budget Crafty Mama. Haven't made a video for a while because I've been really busy making face masks. So I thought I'd get back to it today. So I thought I'd do a tutorial to show you how I've been making them if you want to have a go at making them. Um, if you just don't have the time or the inclination, you could always just pop over to my website which is budgetcraftymama.com um, and I've got some on there. Um, so I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to do them. I drafted my own pattern, uh, but you can go on Pinterest or I think somebody told me that they've even got one on the .gov website. You can print off a free pattern um, and they're all basically done the same. There's not that much difference between them. So, so this is my pattern. If you don't have a pattern, you don't have a printer, um, just drop me a message and I'll, I'll pop you one in the post. So let's get over and choose some fabric and let's make a face mask. Right, so I've decided I'm going to use this fabric today to make a face mask in. Um, so I'm just going to put right sides together and then I'm just going to pop my template onto the fabric and I'm just going to pin it on all the way around and as you can see the corners are getting a bit holy on my template because I've used this one quite a while so I'll need to do another one in the next week or two right and then I use a rotary cutter but if you feel uh, more comfortable you can use a pair of scissors but I just find it reasonably easy to just use a rotary cutter. It just depends what mood I'm in. Um, and then I just cut around my template reasonably close. Which usually helps if I put my glasses on to do this. There we go. I'll take that out of the way. And then Just cut around the edge. I'm trying to keep this in short so you can see what I'm doing. So I just put that in to my fabric bin. I've got a little fabric bin. I've been keeping all my cut off bits of fabric in that are no good for anything. I'm going to use them for stuffing. So throwing them away and buying artificial stuffing, I'm going to use the fabric for stuffing for something. There we go. So now I've cut that out, I'm just going to take all the pins out. And then I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm just going to, if you can see that you've got your, I'll pop it that way around for you, you've got your template there. Um, try zooming in a little bit. Um, and I'm just going to go to the sewing machine and about sort of between quarter and half an inch away from the edge I'm just going to stitch from the bottom all the way up to the top um, just on that front bit there and I'm going to do the same I've done the same already actually with a piece of I'm using the brush cotton so I've done exactly the same thing I've cut that out and I've just stitched all the way along that one side. Right, so I've repositioned the camera so that you can see what I'm doing. So it's a little bit closer now. So I'm just going to sew about a quarter of an inch all the way along there. So I'm just going to turn my machine on. And I'm just going to adjust the stitch length. And then I'm just going to back stitch a little bit at the beginning. going to nip the strings off. Right, so I've done exactly the same thing as that with a piece of brushed cotton. 
so that's going to be my lining and then what we're going to do now is we're just going to put the two together so I'm just going to move the camera out just a little bit so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to open this up if I can get it to open up and then I'm just going to open up the seam and I'm just going to finger press that open all the way down and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the lining and then what I'm going to do is try and line up the seams with the outside fabric and the lining fabric just line up those center seat seams together and then just stick some of these wonder clips on to hold them together it can sometimes be a little bit fiddly but it's not really complicated so I'm just going to peg that one together So now they're pegged together, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go um, along the top. I don't know if you can see this. I'm just going to go along the top, right the way across the top, down the one side and then back along the bottom. And I'm going to leave the one end completely open. So if I just bring the camera a little bit closer. over here so and I'm just doing it roughly on the same length again I'm just going to do a couple of stitches at the beginning and back stitch and then I'm just going to work my way all the way around the top trying to line them all up nicely and making sure I've got those seams together And then I'm just going to go down, I've gone along the top, I'm just going down one side. And now I'm just going to go across the bottom. It's a reasonably quick project. You do need to use 100% cotton. Anything else is too difficult to breathe through. I'm just going to back stitch again at the end. And I'm just going to cut off these threads. Right. I just move the camera back again. Right. So what I'm going to do now is you can see I've sewn round three sides and I've left this side still open. So I'm just going to nip the corners that I've sewn just to make it turn easier and then I'm just going to turn it the right way round there we go. I do love this fabric and then I'm just going to use the chopstick, a nice blunt chopstick. You don't want anything too pointy because you don't want to stick a hole through your fabric. And I'm just going to push the corners out. And then I'm just going to work along those seams just to push them out a little bit. Alright. Now I've done that, I'm just going to... my little clips out of the way and I'm just going to move the sewing machine out of the way as well and I'm just going to bring my little ironing mat across and then I'm just going to 
high end isn't it? Just going to make sure those corners are pushed out nicely. And then I'm just going to iron this so that the sides are nice and straight and pushed out. Just trying to make sure the pink's sort of at the back so you're not seeing too much of the pink at the front. Right, now you've pressed that and it's all pressed nicely. You can see it's beginning to look like a face mask. But we just need to do something with this open end. And all you're going to do with that is you're just going to fold it in the same amount that you'd left for a seam allowance on the other side. So that when you fold it, they're even. Yeah? And it's folded in half there even, so this one's just a little bit too far in. Just need to bring it out just a little bit. There we go. And then once you've got that in, I'm just going to press that as well. Now normally I'd be doing this on the ironing board and I'd be using steam, but because I'm working on the table here, and I've got my craft, my cutting mat underneath. Um, the steam goes through these wool mats, so I don't really want to use steam on here. But if I was doing it on an ordinary ironing board, I'd be using steam. So now we've pressed that, as you can see, it looks like a face mask now. We're just going to top stitch all the way around the edge so that when you wash it, it keeps its shape nicely. If you didn't top stitch it when you washed it, it'd be a bit difficult to, you'd have to manoeuvre it back into position. I'm just sewing all the way around. Now, if you'd wanted to, you could have added elastic into the ends before you'd stitched it. You could have just sort of slotted some in on a loop. But if you pop, pop the elastic in and sew it in, I find you can't adjust it. It's very hard to adjust it. So I do this. I've made them slightly longer. And then I just fold that over. And I sew really close to the edge. Yeah, and it just leaves a little channel to feed some elastic through. So, you just do that on both sides. Just take a couple of stitches at the front. And then back stitch. And then all the way down. And then back stitch when you get to the end as well. And then I do that with the other side as well. I just feed that through while it's under there. Normally I'm doing about 20 or 30 of these, so I do them all in a row and then go down the other side, but as I'm just doing one, it seems a bit f funny just making one. Now that's the only time I've ever made just one. So, just clipping the loose bits of thread off, and that's your face mask ready. Now, all you've got to do now is put your elastic down the channels. So, you've got your little channels here. I'm going to show you a nice nifty little trick for getting your, chan your elastic down the channels. I use, I think it's called a darning needle. It's the one I use for when I've been knitting and I want to sew the knitting together. I don't know if you can see that. It's got quite a sort of large hole on it so that I can feed the elastic through. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So I'm using three millimeter elastic. You can use whatever size elastic you want, but I find that this is 
the best one for behind the ears. It's it's not so thick behind your ears. And for the adult size, I'm doing 10 inches. Because I always think it's better to do it slightly bigger than you, they might want it. So they can make it smaller. But if you've made it small and they need it bigger, they obviously can't make it bigger. So I always give it slightly bigger. So if you can see, there's the elastic. And there's the needle. I'm just going to push that elastic straight through that needle. And it just goes straight through like that. And then the blunt end of the needle, I'm just going to feed through the channel. So it's sort of going through backwards and this is the pointy end. And then I'm just going to pop that on the side and push it. And through comes my elastic. So easy. So I'll do that again for you. Just put the elastic through the eye of the needle. So you've got it through there, look. You can see that. And then I'm just going to feed that through the channel. I've still got the pointed end here. And then I'm just going to put it on the side and push. And then I just scrunch that down a little bit. The needle comes through and brings the elastic with it. And there's your elastic. It's so easy to do it that way. That rather than trying to put a safety pin on the end of one bit of elastic and feed the safety pin through and ruffle it through. Oh, it's such a pain trying to do that. Whereas this way, it just slides straight through. So easy. And then you just tie a knot in your elastic and feed the knot through. I usually just feed the knot through so that it's about halfway down the channel and then that way if they're too loose they can pull it through, tie a second knot and pull it back through so you can't see the knot. It keeps it all nice and tidy. They can adjust it to fit the individual person. Especially with children's masks. There's such a wide variety of sizes in the children. So, And there you go one mask made. Now this will get bagged up, it'll go on my website with all the others or it'll go down to the shop, one or the other, and that'll be sold to somebody. So I hope you like this video, it's not a very long one because it's not very complicated. Um, I hope you liked it, if you do give it a thumbs up, share and I would really love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Um, and you could always leave me a comment at the end of the video. Um, if you'd like me to send you a template, if you really haven't got a printer or you can't find one, just message me and I will print you off a template and send it to you. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye.